Welcome to Master Mode, part of the first DLC expansion for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild that promises to add some Dark Souls flair where now any enemy can and will kill you because everything hits harder. <laughs> Including chests. Master Mode is essentially giving you a harder difficulty for the main game if you want the challenge. These secondary adventures are no stranger to the franchise, and are seen as early as the first installment. Playing a second quest after beating this game would change the design of the dungeons, locations of certain items, as well as change the outright location of some of the dungeons. Other games have done things like mirror the geography of the entire game, like Ocarina of Time's Master Quest, and some allow mostly aesthetic changes, like wearing your starting island clothes the entire game and being able to read Hylian, like you'll see in Wind Waker. In true Nintendo fashion, Master Mode is familiar to these previous installments, but not an exact copy. In Master Mode, the geography of the overworld remains untouched. Shrines, towers, and divine beasts are all where you will remember them, but what you will find are changes in the enemies. The most notable being that every enemy from the original game has now been buffed up a level, which in Breath of the Wild is represented with color. Red enemies will become blue, blue become black, black become silver, and the silver become a new class of gold unique to Master Mode. At first glance, this may not seem like much, but looking into the health of these different enemy levels will show you just how steep that difficulty spike really is. Early in the normal game, Red Bacoblins are your most common enemies and will have a health of 13. With one of your better and more sturdy weapons on the Great Plateau, the Woodcutter's Axe, that is a solid 5 hits to eliminate that enemy. A fight for sure, but more than doable. Change this enemy to a blue Bacoblin, as it does in Master Mode, and now that health pool is at 72, meaning with that same axe, you would now need to land a solid 24 hits on the Bacoblin to finish it off. God forbid you run into a silver Bacoblin with only this axe, and that would be 240 hits you would have to land, as their health is a staggering 720. Oh, but we've only just begun. Enemy levels don't just raise health these enemies hit much harder as well. This red Bacoblin, who was likely the first enemy you saw on the Great Plateau, wields a tree branch, the weakest weapon in the game with an attack of only two. Pit that against the defenses of the best clothes you have at the start of the game, and you can expect to lose a quarter heart from these attacks, giving you 12 hits you can absorb before dying or having to heal. Let's swap that red Bacoblin with his blue counterpart wielding the exact same tree branch against your exact same clothes, and that damage goes from a quarter of a heart to a full heart's worth of damage. That's a three hit kill from one of the weakest enemies you will encounter during the game. Oh, and did I mention enemies now regenerate health past when not being attacked. Lay off the hits for too long and those 24 hits you've been trying to accumulate never happened. And it doesn't take that long for the health to start to regenerate either. Now that we've got the added spike of significantly tougher enemies right out of the gate, don't think they'll give you a break. You remember Lionel, the part horse, part man, part lion that shoots magic arrows and has a super AoE attack? You can look forward to seeing these jerks more frequently, starting right away on the Great Plateau. And no not a red one. Your options are to find a way to kill this guy without taking a single hit because that hit will kill you, or just avoid him altogether because his bow and club drop are 100% not worth it. The last spin you are likely to see are these platforms suspended in the air by Sky Octocrox, a new monster, with archers and chests aboard. But hold your complaints on this one because this is the first bone Master Mode is going to throw your way. Find your way aboard these platforms and open the chests to find yourself in possession of some pretty sweet loot. And you don't even have to kill the enemies to unlock these chests like you would for the Bacoblin games. You can get in and out and be on your way with a beautiful 20 attack sword, bringing those blue Bacoblins back down to a four hit kill that we're used to. Those are basically all the changes you will see from Master Mode. Does it make the game harder? Yeah, and no. 
To me, Master Mode just fundamentally changes the way that I played the game. It is now more of a stealth-like game, bringing that sense of danger in the world to an all-time high. Previously, I found myself going in to kill anything in my path without even thinking because it's how I've always played a Zelda game. But now in Master Mode, I find myself with a question before any encounter. What's in it for me? I look to see if the difficulty and number of weapons I'm likely to break by engaging in the battle is going to be worth it. Remember, in Breath of the Wild, killing enemies doesn't net you any experience. So honestly, most times, these battles aren't worth it. I tend to spend most of my time sneaking around Hyrule, avoiding conflict, and stealing stuff whenever I can. The game's difficulty is most noticeable at the beginning when you are so weak and weaponless, but I'll do a video on surviving that soon. Personally, I would have loved to have seen Breath of the Wild take the approach of so many recent games and allow a New Game Plus feature so I could again traverse the land of Hyrule, this time taking on harder enemies but with the hard-earned hearts, armor set, and stamina at my disposal. But, for better or worse, Nintendo rarely follows these commonly accepted trends. And to be fair, I can honestly see the value in this Master Mode over a more traditional New Game Plus. This mode is forcing me to approach the game in a whole new way and have a completely new experience from my first playthrough. And New Game Plus doesn't always lend to that. But for now, all I have to say is it's good to have more Zelda to play. If you want to check out my tips and tricks for surviving Master Mode, that video will be right here once it's published. Thanks for watching this video. We are a really new channel and we want to continue making stuff like this. It would make our day and help show support so much if you throw us a subscribe and maybe show us to a friend. But even if you don't feel like doing that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you've learned something useful. Goodbye for now.